Hey, what is up everyone? Today we're going to demystify what a chiropractic doctor does and how they can treat many ailments, not just neck, back, and spine issues. I'm Risa Morimoto, your host, and you're watching Modern Aging, where we chat about innovative and holistic ways to improve our health as we age. Make sure you click on that little red button that says subscribe on it and the little bell right next to it, and so you'll be notified whenever a new episode is uploaded. You could also check out our upcoming programs and sign up onto our email list on our website at thisismodernaging.com. Today's guest is Dr. Steven Lindner. He's a chiropractic doctor and nutritionist. Before I met Dr. Lindner, I thought that chiropractors only dealt with spine, back, and neck issues. I mean, did you too? Oh my God, I was so wrong. Dealing with those issues is just a portion of the practice. He shares how the spine is linked to all our organs and nervous system. Thus, when your spine is out of whack, and you might not even know it, which is scary, it's likely that other things in your body is out of whack as well. Chiropractic medicine is a whole body structure and function approach to wellness. Instead of being reactive towards health and in fixing immediate problems, Dr. Lindner has a philosophy of being proactive in maintaining and optimizing our overall health. So check it out. Today we're going to talk about chiropractic medicine. And I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions around chiropractic medicine. So if you could first define chiropractic medicine. Sure. I think <clears throat> the way you opened up this conversation is actually perfect because the, t the words that you use were chiropractic medicine, which I think is part of the, one of the misconceptions okay. people have. So chiropractic and medicine are two very separate and distinct professions. So medicine is using medicine, pharmaceuticals, a lot of um, chemical drugs to try and balance out the individual, to try and perhaps suppress their symptoms to help them make them feel better. Mm -hmm. And chiropractic is a drugless profession. So some say it's the alternative to medicine, but it's just very separate and distinct, two very different things. I think both doctors of chiropractic and medical doctors have great intention to essentially help the individual feel better and function better and become healthier. We just do it by two very different approaches. The chiropractic approach looks at human structure and function based on a neurological principle. Mm -hmm. Structure and function are very closely intertwined. The better the structure, the better a person functions. Primarily, the structure of your spinal column. So proper structure, of course, is straight. Straight, but if we say straight, you'll notice the spine does have curves to it. But for good reason, right? Mm -hmm. Curves, if you look at this, it's like energy. Energy moves in arcs. So if we were to take the spinal column and lie the person down, you would see arcs, right? right? So for, and it also acts as shock absorbers. So this structure, the spinal column, is made up of 24 freely movable bones but it protects the nervous system. It protects the spinal cord and it protects the skull, protects the brain. So within the spinal column, those 24 freely movable bones, you can see it protects the spinal cord. You see that right there? Right. And the nerves? Right. In an ideal alignment, the brain sends messages down the spinal column, down the cord, it exits the hole between the two bones where the nerve is, and the nerve can feed all of the organs and all the parts. But when there's too much stress that bombards the system, whether it's physical stress or emotional stress or chemical stress, and even thermal stress, it's enough to blow the fuse, like a fuse box in someone's home. Mm -hmm. And when that fuse gets blown and the circuit shifts, the vertebra misaligns. So it literally will shift. It It'll shifts. Be. It misaligns. That's what chiropractors refer to as a vertebral subluxation. It shifts. Because there's lots of muscles attaching here. How and painful is that? Usually, and that's a really good question. So subluxations can exist without any pain whatsoever. Wow. Asymptomatic. But we've seen that happen because you have people who have scoliosis and curves, right? We see their structure a little bit distorted, but they're not walking around in pain. Right. Right? So sometimes you can have... Well, a some sub are, but not all, right? Not all. Not all right. are suffering in pain. 
So these nerves that come out, these spinal nerves, part of the nerves control sensory, like what you feel, and the other part of the nerve controls motor. Motor meaning the motor messages that make the heart beat, or the motor messages that makes the lungs breathe, or the motor messages that create digestive enzymes to make the stomach work. So subluxation can exist without pain, but perhaps a degree of malfunction within the body. If it's going to a muscle, maybe the muscle is weaker. If it's going to a certain organ, that organ may not be functioning up to its optimal potential. So the chiropractor is interested in detecting any blockage or interference between the brain and the organ cells and tissues of the body. And this is the highway of communication, is the spinal column. So every bit of information, whether it's information you're hearing or information that you're seeing, all that data, all that input comes in, goes up the spinal cord to the brain for processing, like a computer. And then it processes that information, then says, okay, I'm interpreting what's coming in, now we have to send a message going out. This person is now running. So maybe we need to send messages to make the heart beat faster or messages to the lungs to make that beat uh, breathe quicker. Now we need to send more messages to the muscles of the legs to make them run faster. So it's this communication that's always incoming information and outgoing information. And when it happens unblocked or uninterfered with, that's an individual that can be in this state of homeostasis, this state of balance where maybe you just ate a meal and your blood sugar goes up, but in healthy individuals, it'll find a way to bring it back down. Right. Blood pressure may go up when you're running upstairs, but then it's gotta come back down. So the chiropractor is interested in finding out where those irritations are or those subluxations, finding the interference, making a gentle adjustment to remove it, and then let the body heal itself. So how do, you, how do you know if there is a subluxation? You can actually feel it? So there are certain components to a subluxation that you can feel. You, we obviously can't feel the nerve pinch or the nerve interference itself, but we can find components of that. So one of the components could be a misalignment. So you can feel the tone is different on one side of the body than the other if a bone shifts. So that you can feel. We can use x-ray as a tool to see structural misalignments. We can also use physiology, measuring things. We could measure blood pressure. We can measure lung output using a spirometer. We can measure your balance. We can measure your ability to coordinate. All of these oh, wow. things right. contr are controlled by your neural system. If someone, for example, uh, fell and hurt their hip or hurt their shoulder, let's say there was something physical that happened. Now that individual is walking, but the shoulder is not moving properly. So when they walk, you may see the left shoulder moving well, but the right one is not swinging very well. Right, that actually happened to me. Yeah. It happened, right? Yeah. So your body wants the symmetry of, of movement from one side to the other, because every time your arm swings, that information is actually going into your brain saying, okay, I'm walking or I'm running, and how do I coordinate my steps with my hand movement? But let's say the shoulder, like you said, your right shoulder was hurt or your left shoulder. Let's say was, your right shoulder was- It was my was, right shoulder. Your yeah. right one was hurt. So structurally something wrong from a physical trauma, physical stress, but there's a lot of receptors, neurological receptors. They're receiving information there about the type of movement. Now, maybe it's distorted because it's not moving properly now. That distorted information goes up to your brain. Right. And it goes up to your brain, it goes up to your cerebellum on your right side, but your cerebrum on your left, all of that information comes in. And your body is saying, this is distorted. Now, when the input, is but then distorted. You try to compensate, right? You try, but you shouldn't have to think about human movement. It should happen automatically. Right. But if the information comes in distorted, what happens to the output? It's got to be distorted. It has to equal the input, right? Every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if it's coming in good, it goes out good. If the information comes in distorted, because the structure is distorted, the output is distorted. So now that creates a bombardment of misinformation. 
What's the impact of that on the human body? And what can we do as chiropractors to help that? Let's restore better structure so it functions better. That's the goal. So if you have, say, chronic, I don't know, high blood pressure, or you're having lung issues, or stomach issues, or whatever, you know, people's first instinct is not to go to a chiropractor. Correct. Right? But do you feel like that that should be added, or that they should go to a chiropractor in terms of, you know, trying I to treat? I think it's collaborative. I think mm -hmm. that the effort should be, there should be a healthcare team. Right. Right, so I have a dentist, and I have an eye doctor, and I have a primary health care provider, I have a chiropractor myself, I have a massage therapist, an acupuncturist, I have a podiatrist and a dermatologist, <laughs> right? I mean, I have a whole health care team. Right. Because having that team is, those are all the teammates. I mean, that's part of your health success. That's part of my health plan. I have a cardiologist. I have a specialist for everyone. So. I think it's great for the medical provider, the allopathic model and the chiropractic model to work together in the patient's best interest. And you're getting the best of both worlds. So here you are seeing a doctor of chiropractic with the primary interest of, hey, can you help me ensure that my structure is as perfect as can be? Because I want my neurological function to be as perfect as it can be. And with that, the chances of you getting sick are just gonna be a little bit less. It's not saying you'll never ever get sick, but the chances of you needing crisis care intervention and medical intervention and surgical intervention are far less. Not that you'll never need it, but the chances are less. If we work together with medical professionals and chiropractic professionals together, you get the best of both worlds. You have someone on the proactive side and someone on the reactive side to help. That's that's a great team right there. So see a gastrointestinal specialist, see a cardiovascular specialist, and we can work together. If someone is seeing a cardiologist that's taking high blood pressure medication, they come to me, I need to know what medications they're on. Right. My job is to determine the safety of delivering an adjustment to that individual. Can I adjust them a particular way or do I have to come up with another way of making that adjustment to the individual? Each adjustment is specific for each individual based on their structure and based on their needs. The way I'm going to adjust a senior citizen may be different than how I'm adjusting geriatrics and pediatrics are two different techniques. Right. So actually, which leads me to, so when, as we get older, right? Yeah. Um, are there certain things that we should kind of be look? Are there things that we should look out for? Are there things that we should know about to just to be conscious of to know whether or not we may need an adjustment? For example, I've never had an adjustment personally because mm -hmm. it scares me. I think the fear of it is like, even though now talking to you, I've just kind of like eased my sense of what an adjustment can actually do. Um, and how it could p potentially benefit other areas that I might now, you know, I have thyroid issues, I have heart, blood pressure, you know, high blood pressure issues, but I never equated them. I never thought that they were, uh, that one could help the other. One was a link, right? Yeah. Most people think of chiropractic and they do the chiropractic macarena. They do this, the <laughs> neck pain and, you know, the back pain. You know, I'm a chiropractor. Oh, I've got this neck pain. I've got, you can help me. Um, yes, chiropractic works on the reactive side to help people with pain and suffering, but ideally it would be on the proactive side, ensuring that you're in the most, the best ideal structure so you function better. So the fact that you are seeing these healthcare professionals, right, and you're seeing a cardiologist and, and they may have you on a blood pressure medication, I think now seeing a doctor of chiropractic on top of that, perhaps you'll see it, you may see a change in that function. And I would want to collaborate with your doctor. There are certain medications also that you, that people take that pull out nutrients. So as a holistic practitioner, also a nutritionist, I look at those drugs and go, are these depleting certain vital nutrients from the individual that could perhaps be creating a domino effect of other issues? And mm -hmm. can we offset them and be proactive there? So I communicate that to the doctor as well. See, um, that's, see that I feel like there's a, a big gap oftentimes, right? 
Yeah, the there, doctors there is. aren't talking to each other, and then we as patients are also not trained to have each of the doctors communicate with one another until there's like a crisis. I feel like we're just so prone to crises and not. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. I had a patient that I saw the other day that. I said, can I have your cardiologist number? And she said, sure. She gave me the number. And I said, I'd like to update your cardiologist on my suggestions, which was not taking the patient off any medication, but I analyzed the drugs that they were taking and saw some vital nutrients that were being lost. And he was so happy. The right. doctor was so grateful. Thank you for taking the time. And the patient was so impressed because never did has another doctor said, can I have their number? I'd like to communicate. But th I think that's responsible healthcare. Right. It's your healthcare and you want, I'm always in gathering information. Can I have your last MRI? Can I have your last blood work? Can I see who it is, the inner workings of the person I'm with? And now I have all the paperwork and all that stuff, plus meeting the individual, getting all that data tells, gives me a much more complete picture. There was something that you had mentioned about um, as people get older, are there certain things that we need to look out for or do? For me, I've always thought that independence is really important as people get older. Right. Right? We always hear, well, I don't want to become a burden on my children and I don't want... So how can we help to... How do we provide certain tools to a growing population of elders and allow them and give them tools to be independent for as long as possible. We want those patients to be able to sit and stand by themselves, get on a toilet, which is sitting, get off by themselves without depending on other people because there's a, a degree of dignity that's involved and we don't want people to lose that. Right. So balance is another important thing. I want to make sure that when someone comes in, I watch them walk to my treatment room and I observe their balance and their coordination. So when I see them shift to one side or grab for something to maintain their balance, that's something that really concerns me. And we check this on the initial exam. I look at how well their eyes are moving and tracking, how strong their quadriceps are so they can maintain their own body weight to balance themselves. We'll put them on a foam surface, which is unstable. And I want to assess Policy. their ability. Yeah, the ground is pretty stable, right? So when you're on a solid ground, it's easy to balance yourself. But if we take that variable out and we put them on an unstable surface, right. all of a sudden they start moving or deviating. And then I take out the eyes and I say, close the eyes. And now they really move. That tells me that, wow, we have a lot of imbalances here that we have to strengthen on. Because blinking is closing your eyes then you have to open and regain yourself. I want to make sure when they're on a foam pad that they can turn their head and move it in so many different directions without losing their balance. Right. That to me is another way of assessing for subluxation, bringing out interference or a disconnect. So the eyes, the ears, and the feet are always taking in information into the brain to coordinate your next step, your next movement. So say you've weakened your balance is weakened or compromised. Are there exercises or are there things that you tell your patients to do in order to help strengthen those muscles? So the very first thing to do is remove the blockage from here because even if we give them exercises, if there's interference in the high wave communication up, it isn't going to hold very well. So right. the first thing is let's make sure this pathway is clear first and foremost then we could start doing these adjunctive therapies like exercise and strengthening techniques which all have impact on the brain. So everything that they do, I may only want you to do something on the left side of your body as an exercise or your left foot or your left leg and not your right to balance out the brain. Oh wow. A more balanced brain because you have two hemispheres, a right and left hemisphere, that control opposite sides of the body. So the fact that you had a right shoulder issue that wasn't moving well for a while, and your left arm was swinging beautifully in your left leg, now it's telling me that perhaps there's been a lot of information coming in from this side in a balanced way, going to your right side of your brain, but not so much left. So I may want to say, okay, there's, let's put more input on that one side now for a while to balance that out.